few videos, I've been going through the elements of visual rhetoric. So far, we've talked about line, color, value, size, and texture. Today, we're going to talk about something that's so obvious you might have overlooked it. Content. What's actually in the image? I'm Andrea Gilroy, and this is Comics Crash Course. So this subject is so big, I almost don't know where to start. I mean, what's in the picture? Obviously, this has a huge impact on how an image creates meaning. A picture with a dog will have a different meaning than a picture with a person, and that will have entirely different meaning than an empty landscape. But why? How? For help here, I'd like to turn to our old friend Roland Barthes. We talked about his essay, The Death of the Author, in episode 23. Now, as a philosopher, Barth's primary field was semiotics, which means he was interested in how symbols of various kinds create meaning. Now, traditional semioticians focus on language, but in his 1964 essay, Rhetoric of the Image, Barth turns his attention to, well, the question that I've just posed. How does what's in an image create meaning? So before I tell you how Barth answers this question, I need to explain where he's coming from. So I mentioned he was primarily a semiotician, and one of the most fundamental concepts of semiotics is the sign. The sign describes the relationship between two components of communication, the signifier and the signified. In language, an example of a signifier is the word tree. Now, the signified is what the signifier is referring to. It could be a specific physical tree, the general concept of treeness, or a mental image that gets conjured of trees or a tree when I say the word tree. The word tree is probably starting to lose meaning at this point. When we communicate, we use a signifier, and in our minds, it connects to a particular signified. The person to who we are communicating receives that signifier, but their signified is completely out of our hands. Because we share culture or language, it's likely that when we say tree, the person we're speaking to generally understands us, but they might not understand the fullness of what we mean when we say tree, just as we don't experience exactly what they mean when they say tree, or what they understand when we say tree. Now, the concept of the sign here holds all of the possible signifieds attached to that signifier of the word tree. And that, according to semioticians, is one of the reasons language and communication is so slippery. So in Rhetoric of the Image, Barth asks us whether the system can be applied to images as a way to think about how images create meaning. Now, the sign system doesn't exactly work for images. Unlike words, content in images can be broken down into component parts. It matters if an image features a dog or a human, but it also matters if that dog is white or spotted. It matters if it's a photo of a white dog or if it's drawn, and it matters how it's being drawn. So being able to move up and down the scale complicates the process of interpretation of signs even further. So rather than using the language of signifier and signified, Barth says we should think about images in terms of their denoted and connoted messages. So the denoted message could also be called the non-coded, literal, or perceptual message of an image. The denoted message is the precise, literal description of an image, as stripped of interpretation as you can make it. Interpretation comes in with the second message, the connoted message. Now, the connoted message is also called the coded, symbolic, or cultural message. So there are a few key points to remember about how we discover connoted messages in an image, according to Bars. One is that we all interpret a connoted message according to our own lexicons. So two people can look at the same image and will likely come to a slightly different connoted message depending on their context. What kind of schooling they had, what time period they grew up in, what language they speak. Now, the word lexicon means a type of dictionary or a set of vocabulary. So you can think about these sets of experiences as while writing dictionaries for helping you interpret different images. If you remember in episode 26, when I was talking about color and different cultural interpretations of color, I talked about red, for example. So someone with a Japanese dictionary would look up a red stock price and find that it means the stock is rising. But someone with an American dictionary would look up a red stock price and find that it was falling. So 
This is Barth, the same guy we discussed in the Death of the Author episode, so it should be unsurprising that he emphasizes that intent on the part of the artist is not a determining factor for making meaning. He says, quote, The language of the image is not merely the totality of utterances emitted, it is also the totality of utterances received. The language must also include surprises of meaning. Now, likewise, because everyone has their own individual contexts to bring to interpretation of connoted messages, and even intent doesn't limit the meaning, it's important to remember that the connoted meaning of images can never be solved. There's always more meaning possible in an image than we can ever know. For example, an image might mean something completely different in the future, something we can't even imagine yet. And we have to allow for that meaning to exist. Now, denoted and connoted messages work together. In fact, as Barth says, the distinction between the literal message, or denoted message, and the symbolic message, or connoted message, is operational. We never encounter a literal image in a pure state. The characteristics of the literal message cannot be substantial, but only relational. In other words, because both the connoted and denoted message exist simultaneously in the same, well, data set, the image, we receive these messages simultaneously. We only understand the connoted message in terms of the denoted message and vice versa. In fact, in practice, we often receive the connoted message first and sort of work backwards, reconstructing the denoted message that led us to our interpretation after the fact. For example, this is the Pope, right? Now, an image of the Pope has plenty of connoted messages. As head of the Catholic Church, an image of the Pope is going to connect to your ideas about Catholicism. It might conjure thoughts of holiness and righteousness, or virtue, kindness, but if you're not religious or you live in an area where the Catholic Church has caused a lot of harm, the Pope might symbolize more negative feelings too. Now, I'm half Argentine, and I know Pope Francis is Argentine, and like me, he's also a football fan, so he sparks in me a touch of cultural pride. But knowing this image is the Pope itself is already a connoted message. Understanding the elements of the content of this image, like the old man's costume and the setting and his posture, and interpreting them according to a particular cultural understanding isn't universal. In most of our minds, we're going to jump to the connoted message of Pope so quickly that we actually have to step back to recreate the denoted message, remembering that, well, a denoted message of this might actually be not that it's the Pope, but that it's an older man in white robes holding out his arms. So something very relevant to comics that Bars points out in Rhetoric of the Image is that unlike photographs, drawings are always coded. The hand of the artist removes any chance of there being a literal message in drawings. Not only does an artist bring all of their cultural context to bear, but the way an artist draws, their style, is itself influenced by cultural context, their education, their values, and even their tools and technology available to them. We can try to determine the denoted aspects of drawings, for example, describing the aspects of line and color, all these kinds of things that we've been talking about. But, as I discussed above, that denotative message is actually constructed backwards from our understanding of the connoted message. That was fast. And a lot. But this is a crash course, after all. So when we get asked what a picture is of, what its content is, that seems like the simplest question of all. Easier, certainly, than trying to think about line, color, or whatever, but, well, it's pretty complicated, too. I mean... It's just a dog, right? And that's just a dog, and that's just a dog, and that's just a dog, and they all totally mean the same thing, right? One more element of visual rhetoric left to talk about before we move on to comic-specific content. Though I really believe understanding how art works is imperative to understanding comics. So, I'll see you next week. <laughs>